So what we're going to be looking at today is making a little miniature roof. And uh, so all it is, is a hexagon structure. And you can see there's the roof. And what we need to know is the rise of the roof. So I've got the rise, the height in other words, 485 mil. And then the piece that goes around the outside is called the wall plate. And that's actually going to be 345 mil in this example. So now we've got that, we can actually make the wall plate. Is to, to create the hexagon, you need to make sure that the angle is 60 degrees. Whatever, however many sides you've got, whether it's an octagon or hexagon, you divide the number of sides into 360. So 6 into 360 goes 60 degrees. So all those angles there are 60 degrees. So in order to get the, we've got to put a 60 degree angle on a piece of wood. So in order to do that, what we do is we use the sliding bevel to give us 60 degrees and we put that against a protractor. So there's a little protractor on this uh, board and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that to 60. So just bend the bevel in a little bit until you get the angle is 60. Once you get it to 60, lock it off and then you can mark out the 60 degrees on this piece of wood. So that would be my 60. And then of course what I would do is to measure the length of the wall plate, which in this case is 345. So 345, 34.5. Just pop a marker on there, and then of course you can do your other bevel on that one. Make sure it's nice and flat there. And that would be one piece of my wall plates. What I would do is I'd cut six of them out, and then what I would do is create a half lap here. So we'll have a quick look at the half lap. So what we do, having marked out the, uh, the six pieces of the wall plate, you then create a half lap. And to create the half lap, what you do is you would place that over the top of there, mark it, that will give you your width. And you do the same on the one on the side. And then, of course, you're going to cut them through half way through each one. And then you're going to put the two together and then join them together. So obviously in this case, I'm just gonna pop a little uh, couple of screws in there and we'll screw them together like that. Pop that in. And then what you need to do is because the common rafters are gonna hook over them, you have to actually cut the, the ends off the corners. You can see here the ends have been cut off just so that the common rafter then will go over the edge. So there's an example of one where the common rafter will just pop over the edge of that. So hopefully when you're finished you should have a wall plate something like that, okay? Don't worry if it's slightly a little bit out, that's not, not the key thing here. It's all going to be covered uh, later. We're going to thatch it and uh, so it will look quite different at the end. Um, but there you go, that's the basis. That will need treating of course if it's going to go outside. But that's your, your wall plate. The next thing we've got to do is to work out these rafters to see that they actually meet up and we'll have a quick look at that on the drawing and then we'll see how we're going to do it actually in reality. There's a couple of ways we can actually work out the length of the rafter and the angle of the cuts. Uh, so what we ideally want is some rafters to go in and have the cuts right that when you've put a, a finial in the middle and you've got your rafters, they'll be just the right cut and then you're gonna take out a little bird's mouth joint. So if we were doing it off the drawing, what would happen is you would, um, you could, if you wanted to, look now, because you've now made this, you could look at the overall width and a rafter coming up from there, meeting a rafter there. That would be a true length if I did that. So I could actually look at that distance or take it off the drawing and then I could draw a true rafter. So one way of doing it would be to measure this distance. That's 68 centimeters. 
that's 68 and then whatever the rise is 485 mark it on and draw two lines and that would actually give you if you used a protractor the angle of the cut so I'm going to put my protractor in here and measure down and I can see that that angle there is 38 degrees so I need to cut them at 38 degrees that's 90 because it's a right angle triangle and which means that 90 plus 38 is 128 take that away from 180 leaves the bottom cut what we call a seat cut will be 52 but the plum cut which is this one will be 38 degrees now another way of doing it is we could if we wanted to add the rise to one of these rafters so now it's off one of the other rafters and because that's sort of going in like that it's not a true length so we've got to work out what it is so the way to do that is there it comes in you go a 90 degree line so that's a 90 degree line coming out from that one and you add the rise to that so in this case our rise is 48.4485 mark that on join the two lines up and that angle there if we measure that angle that should also be uh, 38 degrees and you can see there that that is 38 degrees there so whichever way you do it um, you'll still get the same answer so that's so that's okay so we know that this cut here has got to be 38 so now what we can do is we can set our sliding bevel to 38 degrees so now let's just do that 38 degrees so there's my bevel and we'll mark that down and should be around about there so I've set my bevel just double check it once you've once you've done that sometimes it moves so when we do the cut on here you can see that that should be about 38 degrees okay so about 38 degrees that would be the angle of the cut and that angle at the top will be the same angle of when we do the bottom down here so when we do that bottom cut that will be the same angle so that's my top that'll be my 38 slide it down and that will also be the cut for the bottom one as well okay it's also going to be the cut where we take out the bird's mouth joint the top part of the cut so let's have a look at how long the rafter should be so the rafter according to this now we can measure it because this is a true measurement and according to that that should be a length of 60 centimeters so that's 600 just double check it because it looks slightly different on the other side so yeah, that's slightly there, so 580. Yeah, 580. So it's actually 580. So the length of my rafter from there to there is 580. And just to double check, I'm going to see what it is on the other one that we just done. And that also, measuring from there to there, is 580. So we know that the rafter length from where it hits the finial where it comes up to the finial a third of the height up we measure down 580 and we take out a bird's mouth joint and that should sit nicely over the end of the wall plate and up against this the only difference is there might be a little bit of discrepancy here for the finial and there might be a little bit of movement and things so we will check it check it when we measure it on uh, you know later on so that's the that's the theory of how we do that let's have a look at setting that out in order to do that what we want to do is we want to measure first of all the thickness of the wood so the wood is 45 so I'm going to come in 15 mil a third you normally do a third of the wood so 15 mil I've got this combination square and I'm going to set that to 15 
And then what I'm going to do is to, I'm just going to get my pencil now and mark that out on here, 15. And the way to do that is just, you can put a little mark there. So I'm using my sliding bevel as a scribe. Now it's going to be down here, so I'm going to come down here. It's going to be lower than that. And I'm just marking a third the way through. Okay, and there we go. That's about there. So now I can measure from the top, and we said 580. So from here, Five eighty. That is where I will need to set the cut. So that's the angle of my cut. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. We're just going to just slacken that off a bit, just to double check it. That's it. That's my cut, and then I'm going to come down, and that angle there on my piece of wood should be now the right angle and then all I've got to do is to put a set square in there because the coming around the edge is 90 this then needs to be cut out a 90 degree cut there and if I cut that out and I'll cut another one out and then check them to make sure that they're going to work so that's waste that's my bird's mouth joint. So the next thing I've got to do is cut that one out. And then if it's right, I shall write template across the top here. And then all I'm going to do is lay that on the next rafter and copy it. And copy that six times to give me my rafters. So to cut the bird's mouth joint out, what we do is start off as if you were going to cut the wood straight through. Just make a bit of a mark there and then tilt your saw over and get your angle right and then you can cut down to it okay I'm just about there same again on this side just run it through put your thumb there just run it past your thumb a bit get an angle and then tilt it that's it and there we go just clean that out count that shape so just lay that over the second one and just, you can then do that. So what we did was we measured the 580, but I took away half the thickness of the finial just to account for that. Otherwise, obviously, they would have met bang in the middle. And because I've put a finial in here, just a little hexagonal finial, just to tumble them into, uh, I didn't need to worry about that. So that just sits on the edge there, up to there. You've got your, your angle, as you can see and the other one comes in and then sits on that edge there. Now, depending on how you cut off the ends, they will vary a little bit. So what you can do is set this one up and then measure down to make sure that the, all those measurements are bang on. Um, my finial, if it isn't quite, you know, bang on uh, 60 degrees, the angles, that gives you a bit of flexibility. So that's the next thing. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write, um, template on this one so I know this is my master I can lay it on the others but as I say I'm going to make that measurement from once I've set these two up just to double check each one before cutting them because there's always a bit of variation in wood sometimes the wood is twisted sometimes you cut a little bit more off the corners um, so lots of things like that so just be careful of that always double check it okay so one of the most important things when you are creating a structure like this out of wood is to take the actual measurements on the item you're making. So in this case, in order to make sure that the measurement is absolutely right, I'm measuring from the top right the way down to the seat cut, which is 57 and a half centimeters, 575 mil. I could go a fraction more to 580. So I know that it is definitely my length of my rafter. So I've got to make sure that on the rafter, that the measurement from the top here down to there is 580 or just a fraction under. So that, we know that works. 
because that measurement is right. So the only other thing now is to make sure that the angle is correct, that angle there. Well, I could put a piece of string from there to there, and I could use my sliding bevel in order to check it. So you, you could you could put the sliding bevel in with a piece of string and check it, have a, something straight there. But we know what the cuts are off the of drawing, so this should be pretty close. And just putting that in there, you can see that that's sitting in there. That's okay. That's fine. You may have to do a little bit of just chamfering on the edges just to make sure it slots in because there's a lot of rafters all coming in together. And then once you've got that, you can then put the screw in for the bottom one and then we can pop a screw in for the top one just to make sure that we've got that together and that's just held that together we, we need to put a backing bevel on these so that the batten sits nice and flat on the edge you can see that there that that is sitting nice and flat on that so you can put a screw in that will be relatively straightforward but if you didn't have that and you had something like this you would have just one point of contact and there'd be you'd have to put a screw through on a smaller if you want it nice and flat so you get a good strong contact so we'll have a look at how we do the backing bevels off the drawing so what we're doing here is working out the backing bevel on the rafter and the way we do that we've already got the rise here and to work out the true length of the rafter but in order to work out the backing bevel what we do is we draw a line 90 degrees to the plan view of the rafter so there's your line the red line going across and you run that out to where it hits the wall plate then what you do is you take a 90 degree line from the length of the true length of the rafter and where that hits the the line you've just done you use a compass and scribe that round to the top and then you join that to meet the original red line and that will give you the angle so it's that angle there is your backing bevel but now we're going to just have a look at putting some of the battens on when it comes to putting the battens on, obviously you're going to you're going to need to make sure that you've got the right sort of measurements for the side so and make sure you've got the right angle. You could use your sliding bevel to get the angle, or you could just simply put them in place and mark them and then cut them down with a crosscut saw. What I need to do now is to drill some holes and I can pop uh, some screws in. One of the things you want to do, of course, on certain roofs, particularly bigger than this, is you might want to put in what's called a jack rafter. And the jack rafter fits sort of fairly snug uh, on the side there, comes down and then your bird's mouth joint hooks around that. The cuts, the cut at the top is the same angle as this one. So your plumb cut is is that angle. So you, you can take that one off your, off your uh, actual roof if I set that one up so that would be something like that that would give you the cut at the angle uh, a little bit bigger than that and then the the sideways cut has obviously got to be a cut which sort of cuts that angle at the, at there that's at about in this case about 15 to 18 degrees so it's actually down a little bit that will actually be something like that but we can work we can work out those cuts off the drawing and then to work out your jack rafter obviously these in plan view are not a true length because when you've got a height like that of the roof that's going to be much bigger for each one of these so you have to develop the side a little bit so what you do is you swing the rise around and then take that to where the start of the rafter is so that will give you the rise there and join that to the end of the rafter and that now will give you the angle of the cut for your jack rafters so if you're putting rafters in here jack rafters that will give you that angle of cut 
And then all you've got to do is to get your protractor and measure that angle and then you can use your sliding bevel to set that up. Okay, but that would give you extra strength if you were doing a bigger roof and then you can just nail, cross nail them straight into these hip rafters. So that's a jack rafter and you might have one there, you might have one going up through the middle, you might even have one there and another one there. And once you've got the cut, of course, of the plum cut and that cut, it just requires some sawing at a keep that keep the saw at a nice angle to get that nice cut and then of course you've got to reverse the marking out to get one this side to check that your battens are all nice and level you can use a batten as a spacer as you move up so what we're going to do now is have a look at how we would cover the roof uh, I really need to paint 